watching on YouTube, and I know you are because you're watching on YouTube right now. And if you're watching on Facebook, then I know you're watching on Facebook. But if you're watching on YouTube, you missed the first part of the show. So you should go to the Liberty Principle Facebook page. You should like it. That way you don't miss the first part of the show. And sometimes there's a part after the YouTube part ends as well. So sometimes you miss the extra special saucy end of, of some of these shows. But this show is a special show, Lou. And that's his, it is. This is Lou, Lou Sander of the Freedom Fiends. And what's your, your show going to be called that you're working on? Uh, I don't know. You don't know. You've been planning it for how long? All my life. Oh, my gosh. He's still face beefing. Okay. That's what you missed. If you're watching on YouTube, that's what you missed. I start the show and lose like, yeah, oh, man, I'm face beefing, dude. I got I to keep on. I got to keep on the face beefing, you know. So well, I, I sort of I sort of face beefed. What I did was you uh, you tagged me in the post or something like that, and I shared the post and tagged you. So that's what I was doing as far as that goes. Oh, okay. Let me see. Let me see if you tagged me, and if I got it, I I don't have any tags for blue. Oh, you must have you must have tagged the other Paul. <laughs> I, I, I hit one of your accounts. Speaking yeah. of sock accounts, today's your sock birthday, too. <laughs> yeah, I, it is. It's my sock birthday on one of my Facebook accounts. And honestly, I would I meant to put in my right birthday. Somehow I put the wrong year and the wrong birthday. So people think today's my birthday and I'm 41. And that is wrong. My, my birthday is May 19th, not April 19th. And I am not 41. I'm 30. So got those wrong. So I just want to uh, clarify that for the record. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, Say you're... that again. You're not 41. You're, you're I'm how 30. old? I'm 30. Uh, plus 20. Actually, yes. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. I'll be I'll be 50 in May. So happy that's... half a century. Oh man, I'm I, my wife. She she loves to throw parties. She doesn't really like going to parties. She doesn't like being at parties, but what she really loves to do is she loves hosting parties. She loves doing all the cooking, the preparing, and taking care of the guests. And so it would be a dream for her to have a 50th birthday party for me and make it a big thing. And I hate birthdays. So Yay! I parties. Not, huh? Yay, parties. No. So not. it tur it turns out be because of because my face beach beef settings uh, i have to approve all uh tags so when you tagged me and i tagged you back i tagged you under the other account so instead of uh instead of the left sock i tagged the right sock apparently okay i can look at the other sock right here it's on the phone so let me check that out ladies and gentlemen you're watching this live and in person you're watching a man with two accounts operating them at the same time and there we Every, go. Everybody has two accounts on Facebook. <laughs> or more. I actually have more. At least, yeah. But the other ones I have, I actually have for business reasons. I don't necessarily want to have my some of my posts connected to some of the business work that I do. There you go. I got it, dude. I'm here. And we're ready to actually get into the show. And this show is called this title. Well, first off, I got to clarify something. This is an Is Daily Show. But this, this show has a new title, Lou. You froze. Oh, no. Actually, the way that Lou froze, it's kind of poetic. It's like an abstract uh, or, or an abstract expressionistic moment in time where Lou was contemplating his own existence outside of the realm of the face beef. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang up from Mr. Lou. And I'm going to call him right back. Let's see what happens. Hold on, kids. Play along with me. There, I hung up. And now I'm calling back. Let's let's see if if Mr. Sander... At, oh, and you can see. Look, you can see what my green screen... Oh, oh. Call failed. I don't know if we've lost Lou. We may have lost Lou. So I'll try another time here. And uh-oh. Uh-oh. This isn't good to everybody. Hey, everybody. This isn't good. This is pretty bad, as a matter of fact. But the show must go on, ladies and gentlemen. 
I'm going to blot Lou out until Lou actually returns to the show. This is going to be the best show ever, and now it's just going to be the, the best show ever. That's it's, it's a step down. So, so Lou's coming back online. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if we can get him here. I was about ready to move on without him. Better ready to move on without you, buddy. Hey, buddy. I see what you did there. You did too much face beefing. Knocked you offline. I think he's been sucked. He's not answering. And I don't know if he's doing that on purpose. But the title of the show. I'm not going to leave him messing. I'll try him back in a little bit here. So the title of this show is Mimics in the Garden of Good and Evil. And it's really a take on uh uh, an episode that the Bad Quaker did, and there's a picture of, uh, well, it's a bit of a screenshot of of his show page, and there that the the show that we're referencing that is also linked in our show notes, but the the name of the show, what he calls it is uh, mimics, he just calls it mi mimic uh, Mimics in the Garden of Liberty, I believe. Yeah, Mimics in the Garden of Liberty is what he... But I was like, ah, I didn't want to like totally take his title. I'm like, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to IP his title, you know, change it just a little bit to distinguish. Oh, we've got Mr. Sander coming back. Welcome back to the Guess dreams you share in life. Back again. Yeah, well, I was explaining to the audience what the show uh, was kind of getting to it. Let, let, well, let me let me show your your thing again here. Hold on, he's back! Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. So I was explaining the title, "Mimics in the Garden of Good and Evil," that it was a take off of a show done by the Bad Quaker Ben Stone called "Mimics in the Garden of Liberty," and I was explaining to them that I didn't want to totally IP hijack him. So I thought, I'll just change the title a little bit. And uh, I, I, I don't even know anything about the book, but I always like the title Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. So Mimics in the Garden of Good and Evil, that's what it is. And, and really, yeah, man, in the Liberty community, there's a lot of good and there's a lot of evil. Evil. And we're going to kind of talk about that. We're going to talk about Mimics. And this is a Lusander idea, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, what? I saw it. Oh, dude. Oh, you left me hanging. You know, you should have seen it when you're going to have to play the show back after we're done. The the, the part where you froze is a great moment in time. you are got your glasses off and you're looking down. It's a, it's a beautiful moment in time. Ladies and gentlemen, the Santa Claus is real. Look at that. And this is what he, this is what he does in, in the off season. <laughs> I get I got ho ho hos in different area codes. Yeah, you, you know. do. Yeah, you do. But that's another story. That's another show. That's not for this show because it's a family. Actually, oh, this is not a family friendly friendly show anymore, Lou. That's another oh, change cool. that I've made. Like, I'm not necessarily. I, I I don't. I'm I'm actually going through a season actually where I'm trying not to say as many expletives. But that's for personal reasons. But you can let it fly. There's no. We're not. We're not playing that game anymore. I, well, yeah. I've always done that, but you, I, I'm pretty sure that I used up my allotment of profanity uh, on one of the very first episodes. Yeah. So I yeah. have to I have to abstain for a little while. Oh, but uh, yeah, it uh, the what was I going to say? We're it's, talking about the show. We're in a show. Yeah. This is live. We're live right now. People are paying attention. There's like three people watching us right now. We have to entertain these three people with knowledge and goodness and comedy and all that stuff. Huh. Wow. And you just died on me. You just totally crashed. I, I died again? <laughs> I, no, no, you're here. You're here. You're here. No, I meant metaphorically, not, not Skype-wise. Uh, so this was actually your show idea. Uh, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, it really was. Uh, we have other stories lined up because we don't know whether we'll talk about this topic for the whole show or not, but I kind of hope we don't get to the other topics. But if we do, that's fine. Uh, but, but I do have them lined up. But we are talking about Mimics in the Garden of Good and Evil. And what we're talking about, uh, the alternative title, if you will, could be How to Suss Out 
the faker terrians yeah yeah uh well let's let's start off with uh with some little basic background uh what is a mimic would you like to take a shot at it would i like to take a shot at it yeah a mimic is uh uh, an entity that uh, makes itself appear to be something that it's not for a multiplicity of reasons. Um, sometimes the mimic is playing at being something that it's not for protection reasons. Sometimes it's playing at something that it's not for, uh, well, for for predatory reasons. And sometimes it's playing at looking at something that it's not just to kind of uh just to kind of uh grow in the field with uh the, the you know the others to kind of be left alone mm. but really n- not not good that it's in the field growing with the others you know the whole wheats and tares thing a tear yeah. is a mimic. wow you re- you really did listen to Ben's uh <laughs> podcast I did I did yeah yeah, so uh, and and this kind of comes goes along with uh, one of your quotes from a while back. You started it up. Uh, where where you, uh, what was it? Uh, work your garden, build your network, and there was I, I can't remember the last thing. Well, work your garden and build your network is from John Smith, and I added know your power. Okay, <laughs> well, in this particular case, I'm going to change it to weed your garden. Oh yes, and that that's actually part of it that would yeah. fit under work your garden. You gotta sometimes work your garden is weed your garden, and yeah, that's what we're. I guess that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about weeding yeah. the garden. It's an unpleasant yeah. topic. Pr- protect your network and remove the weeds from your garden. Yes, and and uh, what was it? Uh, there was know, one part know your in there power. That, yeah, there was one part in there where Ben was talking about. Uh, about a a uh, parasite that would get involved uh it would get in the cotton fields that so they'd have to take it out and burn it separately because it was very hard to distinguish so uh you gave a pretty good wheats and tears yeah you gave a good definition of, of mimics uh, i actually did some notes this afternoon uh mimics are are not what they appear to be and it's for the purposes of fooling others it's it's something that um uh, I, I broke it down into uh, uh, predators, prey, and parasite. Pre- yeah, predators, prey, prey, and parasites. Yep, that's a good and, simplification. Yeah. So sometimes, sometimes you have prey that poses as a predator for its own defense, and these aren't really that big of a deal. Uh, in the liberty community, uh, not 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 a real big thing. The the, the bigger problems are the predators, uh, particularly the predators. Not may, maybe not necessarily uh, posing as prey, but uh, so, so some of the examples that that Ben gave uh, in, in in the podcast was you would have um, as far as prey that would uh, pose as a predator. There, there are certain types of butterflies that are poisonous, so natural selection or whatever has has taught birds not to eat these things. Well. There's a there's a type of moth that mimics the appearance of this butterfly and does it for self defense. Yeah, so that it won't get eaten. Yeah. Right. Right. Now, there, there's uh, there's predators out there that mimic themselves to look like something that's harmless, uh, something that's not gonna that's not gonna hurt you. And I, I think he gave an example of the coral snake and another snake. I think the coral snake may be the poisonous one. I don't really remember. Yeah, the off coral the top snake of my, is yeah. the poisonous one, and there's another snake that yeah. uh, looks like the coral snake, but it's actually the coral snake that's mimicking the safe snake. Yes. Yes, uh, and and that's for the purpose of luring in prey. Uh, he also spoke about a type of fish that. Uh, I think it's called an angler fish. Is that? I, I I can't remember what it's called, but anyway, what it will do is it. There's a part of it, like an appendage or something like that, and kind of looks pers- like a fishing pole sticking yeah. outside of it, and it's got this this thing Looked dangling. Like a worm. Like it looks like a worm, something that another fish would want to come and eat. 
Yeah. So what will happen is a smaller predator will come and see this worm and say, hey, wow, that looks really tasty. Wow, I could get myself a meal here. And then, boom, the real predator comes out and grabs it. Yep. Sometimes uh, you think you're the prey or you think you're the predator when, in fact, you are the prey. Yeah. And and then finally, the the parasites or the distractors. Uh, he, he, we were talking about the wheats and tares just a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, that's the big there, example he gave, yeah, right? Yeah, there there are some plants out there, and even some animals. Um, and what they what they will do is they will go in, and and, and they're not necessarily harmful. Uh, they're not necessarily destructive. They're they're they're, they're not predators. They're not going to eat anything. But what they will do is they will gobble up resources. They will gobble up nutrients in the soil, uh, water, and vitamins and minerals and whatever plants eat. Uh, Brondo electrolytes. <laughs> uh, it, it, it will take the it will take the electrolytes from the other plants that can be used to create a strong crop, a strong healthy garden, and and the, it, it will gobble up those resources. And the insidious thing about it is it doesn't do it in a really noticeable way. It's it's incremental. You barely notice it. You're really not going to notice it until at the end when you go to harvest and you're like, your harvest is like, you know, 70% of what you thought it was going to be. And if your harvest is 70% of what you thought it was going to be and you're a farmer, uh, you are effed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that is a big hit. That's a huge hit for a farmer. That is a yeah, that is a monstrous hit. So it it, it yeah, it does a it does a lot of stuff there to uh, stir up trouble. But anyway, so what I was thinking about, and th this originally came out in 2012, and I'm not sure if uh, if this was when uh, Ben first started beefing with Cantwell, but when you look at the uh, what was going on in the liberty movement or community or mission and the liberty garden would would definitely be a, a, a metaphor for the liberty community or such as that or, is yeah. yes yeah uh, but anyway he, he around about that time I believe it was he had started talking about the about the different folks and. We all know what has happened to Molyneux, uh, how he went from being a very solid liberty person to getting into a lot of the nonsensical stuff and, and embracing fascism. Well, I want to say something about Molyneux. Now, I I discovered Molyneux very late, and it, even when I discovered him late, while I definitely like things about him, there are things right away I didn't like about him. I don't tend to trust absolutarian folks that seem to— believe that they have all the definitive answers and that's what Molyneux struck me as so that right away was a big red flag before anything else happened that is always a big red flag for me and I don't want to say absolutely that all absolutarians as I'm defining them and by the way an absolutarian is not one who has absolutist values absolutarians are just ones that 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 their their definition of absolutes are incredibly broad <laughs> and uh and there's no room for doubt with these guys, and they will hammer you if you suggest that there should be doubt. Those are the absolutarians, and that would be Stefan Molyneux. He he latches onto an idea, and he and he runs into it with with full vigor. You know his UPB, his uh, well, what do you call it? Uh, what, what was it called? Where you, you leave your family? What's it called? Your oh, defooing, defooing, defooing. The, the the ideas that he would get that he would just. He'd be he'd run with it with absolute certainty, and he'd express that to his "quote unquote" followers, and that that to me was was always a red flag. Even yeah. before he started, suddenly, hey, you know this, you know this Donald Trump over here, you know, you know, I've really been thinking about it, and you know, you know, the way of fighting a fundamental battle here, you know, this existential battle here, you know, we must consider whether it is time for us to consider whether it is pragmatic for us to embrace the state. That's pretty much what he was doing. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. He was against the state before he was for it. Right. But he was for the state only so he can be against it. That's his line. Yeah. You need to yeah. protect the state so that eventually you could use the state to get rid of the state. I think I just scrambled my own mind with that one. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, I was kind of curious as to what led to his his change. He uh, he was vehemently anti-state early on. And I I really enjoyed his stuff and and yeah, the, the, there's some of it that I didn't go along with because it it was uh, uh, how could I put it? Uh, I saw some things in there that. Uh, I, I saw more personal projections. Uh, his, thing, his thing was single mothers. Uh, it is it, it's not as it's not as BS as a lot of people like to claim, but it's nowhere near as true as he likes to claim. Well, this is what an absolutarian does. Mm -hmm. They take a truth, a truth, and they and they make it absolute across the board, no exceptions. They overgeneralize and overcommit. Uh, there is some truth to be said for single mothers. There's some truth to be said for single mothers being more likely to favor a big state because they need the big state to take care of them. There's some truth to that, but it's not absolutely true. And I don't think right. it's, even though I, I think maybe it's majority true, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't know for sure, but, but it's nowhere near any, nowhere near approaching absolutely true. Right. Uh, but I, I, I think that he projects a lot of his own upbringing onto that, and, and it, it sounds like he uh, has some issues with his own mother, and I think that's the source of a, of a lot of his, uh, hmm, how can I put it, uh, a, a lot of his lashing out and outbursts. I, that, that, I, that's, just, that's just my take on it. I've never met the guy. I don't know. I, you know, I don't know what's inside his head, but that's just the impression that I get. That's the impression that he gives me. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's 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 fair for me. That's what I would say. I would. Uh, uh, and so, I mean, on our topic here where we're talking about the wheats and the tares, he's kind of a tear. Uh, mm -hmm. So he's he's kind of he's he's in the mix. And in a way, he's like he's more than a tear, though. He's like a, another entity where he actually appears to be doing good. So it's not like he's just stuck there and doing nothing. I mean. The the story of your enslavement is still, I think, brilliant. Uh, Abs absolutely. And and I still share that with people when 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 I know somebody is kind of like kind of nudged and kind of curious and yeah, that's that's one of my go to videos is to send them to watch the story of your enslavement. It had a bit big. I had already crossed over at that point, but it but it had a big impact on me nonetheless. But so so he has me to what he does. So he's a really crafty tear and i don't think that he's a tear who thinks he's a tear that's another part of it <laughs> i think he fully believes that he's 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 being he's he, he he's looking for a solution you know like he says you know i'm a philosopher but you know i like to live my philosophy and apply my philosophy and that's a, so he's he's tried all these things and he's thought you know he can win hearts and minds and we can get people to take care of their kids and treat their families the way that they should and you know, do the non. You know, I don't. I don't know how big he was with peaceful parenting, but uh, very big on it. I thought so. I wasn't a hundred percent sure. Uh, if if we could treat our kids in peace with peace, and we could transfer that peace to kids, this is how the state was going to go away. And he was doing all this work, and and uh, well, I think a part of him was also doing all this. He was he was kind of answering to his own success, which is always a danger, but. Uh, I think he got frustrated. I think he thought, screw this. This isn't working. This is nowhere near going to work. It's time. It's time to. It's time to expand the audience. Ex well, expand the audience. And yes, I can reach a bigger audience and I can pragmatically get there. But the first thing that I have to do, somehow I have it in my mind that Western tradition is the bulwark, the benchmark, the beacon of freedom. We have to hold on to Western civilization because it's never had slavery. It's never murdered millions or done it. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Yeah, I, I get I, I get a kick out of that. Uh, w when you get these culture status, cultural justice warriors, I like to call yes. them. Yes, oh, I and, use that all the time. I don't know if who yeah. came up with it, if it was you, but I'm, that's I'm I always I'm use it. I I may have coined that. I and, love that. I and, always and, and, use and it. And those. And they'll say things like, and I, I saw this recently with uh, with one of these mimics. Um, 
using talking about uh, people in the Middle East and saying those people have been killing each other for hundreds of years. I'm like, are you talking about people in the Middle East or are you talking about England? Because they both England, did. Yeah, they both because, did. because England, France, uh, what would become Germany, they've all been engaging in wars with their with the neighboring countries since they were countries. As a matter of fact, since before they were countries. France and England have been fighting with each other since they found out that the other existed, probably before it was called France or England. Right. But when you but when you make that claim, they've been killing each other for hundreds of years as if it's a horrible thing. And 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 yeah, it is a horrible thing. But if you're making that claim, is it mutually exclusive to the group that you're that you're criticizing? If your own group has that same history, uh, isn't your own group just as bad as the, the group that you are denigrating? You have tribalism in your group. Yeah. You have you have permissions for coercion in your group, just like the other group has. Yeah. yeah. So I mean I'm I'm not anti well go ahead. Why well, that 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 person is is not only a hypocrite but probably an ignorant hypocrite. How do you mean define the word ignorant? Uh ignorant as in unknowing or ignorant as in rude. Uh ignorant as in not knowing. Now it may be willfully ignorant and ignoring the the history of of all these different places that have been killing their neighbors for hundreds of years or killing each other for for centuries. No. But but to blame one group and say they're doing what my group does. No. That's, what what that's, sort of nonsensical thinking is that? Yeah, and I'm not I'm not anti western civilization. I'm just not pro western civilization. I'm pro peace, I guess you could say. I'm pro Whoever and whatever decides not to take, and 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 you know, I'm going to say this, but I'm also going to allow that I don't necessarily believe you can pin me down to an exact definition of, of what constitutes what I'm going to say here, but generally, the people, the custom communities, the cultures, whatever that that that. That let's just say frown upon the use of coercion against folks who have not directly threatened our or harmed others, and from my understanding of history, there's very few cultures, certainly in the you know since cities have come into being, or since civilization, whatever you want to call it, has come into being, that did not didn't give a place for coercion to take place against individuals who did not directly threaten or harm others, including Western civilization. It's, it's, it does the same stuff. And I would say, in a lot of ways, okay, let me... I've been watching China videos. This, just be patient with me, because this, this is going to make sense, hopefully. <laughs> At first, it's not. At first, it's going to seem like a non-sequitur. I've been watching China videos, and now I... China? I China, China, China. The wrestler, the, the fancy, the, 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 the the country, fancy dinnerware, the, okay. the nation state. <laughs> That'd be weird if I was watching China videos, the wrestler. If I could tie that in, I'd be brilliant. But I've been watching China videos, and I've been watching the type of culture that China has. And China, you think, you probably think China, well, they're just collectivists. They're just, you know, Everything serves the state, and the individual is not really distinct. And yeah, they don't have the same sense of individuality that we do have over here. But they do have some sense of individuality. It's not completely gone. And in some areas in their life, they actually have much more individuality than we do. In in terms of, especially now, in terms of self-expression. So long as you're not directly defying the state, you can self-express over in China like you cannot do over here. You will be totally, you will be socially hammered uh, if you say some things over here that you could totally get away with over in China. There are uh, aspects to China that are more free than we have over in 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 Western culture. There there is no, and and my point here is that these different cultures we tend to say we're used to certain freedoms that our culture allowed us to have. And so we put those types of freedoms on the hierarchy at the highest level. But we have other areas of our life where we're not as free as other cultures are. But because 
Well, we've never really had those freedoms. We don't view those freedom, those having those freedoms very high. So we look at those cultures and say, you're less free. But those cultures, those people that grew up in those cultures with an expectation for certain types of freedom in certain aspects of their lives, they're looking over at the West and saying, no, 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 we're more free than you are. It's not as simple as you think. It's not cut and dry. Western civilization is not the beacon to freedom. It's not, it's not, you know, the poison pill. It's not the, the devil either. It's just not the hero. There are no heroes. There's only power. Exactly. Exactly. There, there are no heroes. There is no perfect. And a lot of these people that criticize uh, anarchists, libertarians, or liberty folks as being utopian are envisioning a utopia that doesn't even exist. So I, I, I guess— I guess what to get to the meat and potatoes of the meaning behind all of this, uh, what is the Liberty Garden or what is the Liberty Community? What are we thinking of when we talk about that group? And what are these what are the people in this community looking for? What is our goal? I believe for most people, I'm going to ostensibly say, and, and, and I, okay, I will. Agreement. So, so let's let, let, let's go with what we're looking for. Okay, what am I looking for? I'll tell you what I'm looking for. I am looking to be part of uh, a a reality around me in which I am threatened the least with violence for taking action that does not harm others. That's what I'm looking for because I believe, for me, that satisfies a lot of my personal preferences. And it creates a condition that I think I have the best opportunity to maximize my my skills, my abilities to have the the subjectively speaking the best life that I could possibly have. So I I just want to I just don't want to be threatened <laughs> for not hurting if I'm not hurting someone. That's my goal. My goal is in in maybe we're in agreement here, maybe not. Uh, maybe mine is just a little bit more uh, macho libertarian flash, uh, but maybe yours is I, more idealistic. I don't know. I want I want pure uncut freedom. I don't think that's possible. I don't I don't want it laced with any social contracts, constitutions, or any other nonsense. It may not be realistic, but it's my goal. It's I what think, I want. Well, I think what I'm describing is what you're seeking it's it's yeah i mean but this is how i would define freedom and and that would be i mean you use the word freedom wow that's a loaded word what the hell does that mean uh to me freedom is the ability to make a, a choice to take an action that is the least affected by threat of force that's how i'm defining freedom uh, that's that's just paul's arbitrary definition i'm not trying to to apply some universal scientific mold. this is this is what i have in my head when i think of the word freedom as I broke it down, and I kept breaking it down to the to the barest necessity, and I'm still not sure I'm actually at the core, but I think this might be the core for me. That's freedom. Okay, so we 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 have our version of freedom, and there's a lot of people out there. Uh, the, the The liberty movement has, for lack of a better phrase, become popular. Uh, Particularly, it, it, it really start, yeah, it, it started kicking in in, in 2008. Uh, in, in 2012, with Ron Paul's campaign, a, a lot of people got involved in it. But here, here's the thing. When, when you and I discuss freedom and somebody like Glenn Beck says freedom, because— Glenn me Beck's not Gl even close. Yeah, me. You, me, you, me, and Glenn Beck— a lot of people think that we're libertarians, all of us. Oh, yeah. Okay. They think, yes, yes, right. Glenn yeah. Beck is good yeah. transition. And, 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 he, and he tells people that he's a libertarian, too. But uh, to, to quote the, that movie, I don't think that word means what you think it means. Yes. And it, 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 there, there's, there's a meme. There, there, there's always a meme. It's uh, the speed dating meme. And uh, this guy says to, to the girl, and he says, uh, well, I'm a libertarian. And she says, oh, you mean like Glenn Beck? And he turns around and says, next. <laughs> right. And that's a good choice. That's right. a really good choice because right. you know there's going to be a gulf between you two, a yeah. major gulf of communication between you two. Yeah. Now, now, granted, Glenn Beck was actually a gateway drug for me of sorts. 
uh, mostly because I, I I saw Tom Woods and Yuri uh, Maltsev on on this show, and and I decided to look forward and 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 expand a little bit, and I started getting into the Tom Woods stuff. I'm like, holy cow, this is great, and I quit listening to Glenn Beck. But but here's the thing. There are people like Glenn Beck that portray themselves as libertarians, and you and I know that they're not libertarians, but the person out there that has only heard of libertarians on the the the, the um, news network, you know, the like the Fox News, CNN, and where the libertarians are just dismissed as kooks and lunatics and everything else because uh, they don't they don't worship at the altar of the state. Um, you know, those those people that just hear the dismissal and, and keep on going. And by the way, I was one of them for quite a while. I, before I crossed over, as it were, before I really got to, to know the community, I have, I know the community pretty well now. But before then, if you would have asked me what a libertarian was, I would have said, oh, they want legalized pot and they hate cops. That, that's what a libertarian was to me. But there but there's so much there's so much more than that. There is. There is a yeah. lot more Li- than that. Libertarians hate more than just cops. <laughs> <laughs> and they want to legalize far more than just marijuana. Oh yeah, they want they want to legalize a lot of things. Well but, they don't even yeah. they want to abolish the word legalized. Well, yeah. the, the actual libertarians, if you if I, I don't usually like using that phrase, by the way. I don't like playing the who's the real libertarian. But but there are some – like I have a pretty broad definition of the people that – like even if I disagree with them, I'm not very narrow in who's in or in or out of the libertarian club. But, uh, yeah, there are some limits. Like if you're if you're saying that, uh, you know, the state's okay, okay. <laughs> For me, yeah. okay. All right. I, All right. I view I – view... The, the the Glenn Beck types and uh, in, in Glenn Beck in particular, I don't know that there's any malice intended here, but I, I lump him into the predator category. He's oh, I think there is. I don't think it's yeah. malice as as as, oppor- as much as opportunism. I kind of believe that Glenn Beck has become a lot more about about being n- not not necessarily about having the biggest audience because he's done stuff recently like with Donald Trump that demonstrates he's not necessarily about that but what he is about is being like some sort of messiah figure yeah he is going so, to lead you out of the promised land and he develops this cult around him so i i have i as i mentioned before i actually did some notes today which is I didn't uh, sem- semi unusual for me. Uh, s- sometimes before a show, I'll do some notes, but for the most part, I'll wing it. But since we're doing mostly a single topic, and I really wanted to, probably a single topic. Yeah, I really <laughs> wanted to have my act together on this. Uh, so I. I, I I did some uh, dividing up into groups here. And now, now, granted, there's some crossover, but the predators, and when I say the, the predators, I mean those that are, they're, they're not looking to create liberty. They're they're looking to capitalize. They're looking to co-opt, and they're looking to. Uh, the, the, they're not focused on the goal, and they they have some uh, ulterior motives. Uh, ulterior motives, uh, in, in some cases, may be malice. Uh, other cases, it may be. It, it, it may not be, but anyway, it, it, it's really hard to say. I can't, I can't nail down all my feelings on it, but uh, so I, I don't think there is one way. There's a big variety in what you're talking about. Some of them are pure predators. Some of them are, are maybe some of them are just looking to get laid. Uh, there's a variety of them that fit into the category you're talking about. Well, they came to the wrong movement because uh, yeah. the, the ratio <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> is thin. But anyway, um, so. Groups that I put into the into predator category, and and there's some uh, there, there's some crossover with the parasites and distractions, uh, the alt right, the bordertarians, the fascists, the those that are seeking no notoriety instead of freedom. I, I think um, I think in uh, I think two buck and and uh, Glenn Beck fall in that category, and then yes. also the 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 massive influx of state socialists that are they're infiltrating the garden and and really becoming weeds. State socialists. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, 
the the so-called left libertarians are calling themselves mutualists, but uh, quite frankly, I mean, they're they're advocating socialism. I mean, there's there's some out there that I'm I'm friends with a number of quote yeah. unquote left libertarians, and I consider them uh, they're. I don't. I don't necessarily agree with everything, but uh, yeah, I've actually learned I, a lot from them. So I, I, I have no. I have no problem with the mutualists. Okay, what I do have a problem with are those that are coming in and they're talking mutualism, but they actually mean real state socialism. Well, yeah, the the tankies as yeah. as they're called, uh, and there's a there's a lot of folks, and actually you'll find them on the right too. You'll find them left and right. They're anarchists, but when you push them up against the wall, you find out that uh, that, that that they there is a place in their lives where they advocate state force, and they, and they're advocating state force against someone who's violating their preferences not not because they're actually violating anybody else but because they're violating their preferences like this uh glenn tuttle yeah i'm gonna name you buddy i, I don't think i him. know him i unfriended him he's uh he's this, he's been going on with this uh narrative about uh he's been showing the little democracy uh, uh, occupy democrats memes about the churches and how the churches you know, they're 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 there's the the government is spending billions and billions of dollars a year because churches aren't aren't taxed. Now that that's they're not funding the churches. They're just not stealing the church's money. But because he hates Christianity, he doesn't just hate Christianity, he hates all religions. But because he hates Christianity and he believes that Christians are more of a threat to him than even state communism. He believes that it's okay to endorse the state taking money from churches. So there's something about that guy that he is willing to uh, invoke the state to uh, attack a group because that group doesn't follow his preferences. And I mean, I, I'm only naming him because he's the guy that I just had this interaction with and it's fresh in my mind. But it, I think it's a pretty good example of what I'm talking about, that wait, you, you, you keep pushing. And, you know, for me, when I first crossed over, I had to go through that those stages of tests. And, like, actually, one of the tests was when they were first talking about uh, Syrians coming over and they were going to bring Syrians over to the Lehigh Valley. And I was still – I wasn't fully aware of the nuances of the world uh, as I understand them today. So I was fearful of these Syrians, these potential terrorists moving into the Lehigh Valley. And uh, yeah, it was a test for me. It was <laughs> uh, because th there are people moving in here that uh, I would have had to have uh, advocated for state control to prevent something because of my fear. Not because anybody did anything to me, but in my case, because my fear, and that means my fear, they're 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 going against a preference, my preference to feel secure, and so because they're going against my preference to feel secure, I I was tempted, but I had a value that was underneath it that was more important than even my own security. Actually, I'm willing to face fear rather than to continue to advocate for something like the coercive enterprise that I view as being a murderous, hideous machine that is guaranteed to kill more. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And as, as far as like uh, importing refugees, uh, I'm, I'm, I am as opposed to— Oh, I'm, I'm opposed some, to the state, yes. Yeah, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm as opposed to the state— importing refugees as i am them keeping out people that are moving on their own right absolutely yes but my fear was not thinking oh well my, my reaction was not well the state is using resources to bring these people in that wasn't my concern my concern was only that these people were going to live a few miles away from me and they might be terrorists which is an insane thought by the way just an insane thought the, the chances that people in this group were actually going to be terrorists were about the same if you if you gather a bunch of uh, of uh, white nationalists. <laughs> yeah. uh, and really, because well, uh, most white nationalists are not going to do terroristic things, but some of them will. 
could you imagine if there were some cops in that group of of uh, refugees? Then the percentages go way up. Yeah, because you're much more likely to be killed by a cop than you are a terrorist. Now, if they had been bringing over Syrian cops, <laughs> they're like, "Honey, it's time." No, I'm just kidding. I just got <laughs> kid. I kid. I kid. I'm all peace loving. You know, NSA. I, I love everybody. I just, I just want to get along with everybody. But, but back to your point. Th- this is uh, this. <laughs> Th- this is where you find out, and 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 how do you find out who the quote unquote fakertarians are? I don't think that you look for fakertarians. I think that you just you run with people, and as you find people that you have to understand, what are the basic principles of rejecting a coercive enterprise? And if you understand what they are, when people consistently violate those principles. No matter what obfuscations they use, you just kind of like, yeah, okay, well, well, when it comes to this whole liberty thing, you're not, you're not an ally for me. You're not somebody that I'm going to run with. But the problem is, how many people really understand the basic principles of what it means to reject a course of enterprise? Exactly, and using the course of enterprise, uh, particularly against other people for your own preferences is where I have the big problem, uh, particularly with the bordertarians. Um, the, they, they make a lot of claims about foreigners getting in here and getting on the welfare, and, and, th- and that's their thing. They say, well, you can't have a open borders with a welfare state. But they completely ignore the domestic citizens that are – part of the welfare state. They're not complaining about them. There's no mention of them. They're not complaining about the welfare state. They're complaining about foreigners on the welfare state. And even more, if, if, if your issue is with the welfare state, then they call for getting rid of the welfare state and stop advocating for the Affordable Border Control Act. Because what what, what is border security going to do? How is that going to shrink the welfare state? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's it's not. It's, it's not. No, because if if they if they're not going to spend the money on on the uh, immigrants, they're they're not going to cut their budget. <laughs> they're yeah. going to keep expanding it and spending it on other stuff. Yeah, it, 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 I I hate to play the 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 pragmatist role here because they're on my list of predators too. Uh, but but here's a question: if if there's going to be a welfare state or if if, if you, if there's going to be like a welfare state or or, uh, or a police state, which would you rather have? Well, social workers don't kick in your door and, and shoot you eventually to disarm you. So right. be- between the welfare state and the police state, if, if I had to make a choice between the two, I would go with the welfare state. But the thing is, th- if, if you ask them, how, how the, why don't they just uh, push for the abolition of the welfare state? Then they'll say, well, they'll never do that because it's politically... A- you know, unpalatable. Oh, okay. Then how, how politically palatable is it to actually implement the police state on these same people? And that's already happening. Yeah. It's, it's, it's happening. And, uh, don't think that, uh, people who are not illegal immigrants are going to get caught up in it. A uh, story just happened, which I, I may, I don't know if I'm going to blurb it tomorrow or if I'm going to write about it, whether I'll just write a little commentary on it or if I write a whole article. But there's a story where the where ICE, they went into a farm with no warrant and they got a hold of a legal immigrant and arrested him. And it was, an, I don't know the full details. I didn't read the full article, but uh, that that's a, a legal, a legal immigrant. I mean, my best friend, is a legal immigrant who's now a citizen. He he, when he was a kid, he came over here from Greece. He's a legal immigrant. He could get caught up in it. Uh, who who? Uh, my, my brother is married to a Hispanic woman, and she looks Hispanic. She could get caught up in it. There's so many people that can get caught up in it. And mm-hmm. <laughs> you're you're advocating for holy mother of God terror, is what you're advocating for. Far worse than people being on welfares yeah and and i i 
I, I hate to throw around the the racism accusation, but if, I, I have to wonder what the what the actual root of it is, when when they only talk about foreigners being on welfare and they have a tendency to talk more about Mexicans and and non-white people, and I mean, quite frankly, a lot of them they 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 do come off as racist. I mean, CCR is a prime example. Well, no, no, he's he's more than come off as racist. He is. He's yeah. talking about uh, he's, rain, he's, rain, rain, Rainbow Man, Mister yeah, Rainbows, and, 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 yeah, the, the ad cap Bible right, right writer. Yeah, and, and and my understanding is that he denies being a racist, but <laughs> yeah, I'm not a racist. I just believe that white people are better than everybody else and should be by themselves. I'm not but I'm not a racist. I'm not a carnivore. Give me that bacon. Well, I mean, I'm not going to treat a black person different because they're black. I just don't want them to live with me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> or, be, or be near me. Yeah. Want, or be near me. Them, right. Yeah, but I'm not racist. Want, he just wants them to be in their separate but equal accommodations. Listen, man. I'm just <laughs> killing people. I'm not a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's he's he's a racist. He's he's uh He's he's just a flat, out. and he's a more e- extreme example. Yeah, but but honestly, you know, I don't know how we got on this, but I don't care. Uh, th- there, I see this us versus them is starting to get worse and worse, and part of the us versus them is, I mean, I don't like the white guilt stuff. I don't like the white privilege stuff. I, I don't care about any of that stuff. I reject all that. I don't care. I really don't care. I care about the reality of power. And, and the reality of power for fo- folks is I don't care. I'm not giving up crap. Okay? that's I'm not going to make a philosophical argument with you. I'm not going to try to get into some sort of uh, uh, theological, philosophical, scientific, any kind of argument with you about why it is that I should or should not be aware of my quote unquote right privilege or suffer from weight guilt. I'm just not giving you my stuff, but that doesn't produce in me. Well, maybe, maybe, I mean, if I'm going to be honest with myself, it's a, there is, there is a tribal tendency that we still have. Sometimes there's a a bit of an inkling of, I I start to feel a little bit of that flare up of us versus them. Uh, And it's just a a brief flare up. Uh, And uh, I, I understand that whiteness is not a thing. I am not a white person. I am Paul, who happens to have been born with this body. And from this genetic history, whatever, I didn't choose this life. I didn't choose this lineage. And I don't have any, I don't have any emotional attachment to it. It means nothing to me. And so... My the the result is not for me that I'm going to suddenly become aware of my whiteness and suddenly start to hate people that are not white, but tribalism is very very powerful, and for folks that haven't actually come to recognize the brutality of the whole coercive enterprise model, I think they're much more susceptible to to kind of falling into that trap more and more, kind of becoming more tribal focused. So you're going to see more white racists. You're going to create more white racists, which is going to produce more backlash against the white racists, which is, it's, I don't see this going to a good place. In, in my best Morpheus impersonation, and yes, yeah, white privilege me to think that I can impersonate Morpheus. Um, <laughs> what, if, what if I told you that you could be thoroughly disgusted by communists without turning into a fascist or a Nazi? I'm because thoroughly that, disgusted because, by them too. Be, because that is one of the options out there. And and there's a lot of binary thinking of people saying, oh, well, I'm opposed to that. So, hey, let me join up with this collective. And in the, 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 the commies and the fascists, they're, they're just kissing cousins of collectivism. They're they're yeah. what, what are the twins that they, they don't look alike, but they. Fraternal uh, twins? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're the same That's thing, a good but... analogy. They're fraternal yeah. twins. That's what they are because there are differences. But at the end of the day, they both have found reasons to advocate for coercion, 
to take place against people who did not directly threaten or harm others for the sake of their particular collective, the good of the whole, subverting the individual to the good of the whole. They're both doing it. Yeah, I, I like the – there's a Bob Higgs quote that I really enjoy, and, and he says, when given the choice of – of the le- choosing the lesser of two evils, or when given the choice of choosing between two evils, choose the door. Yes, that's excellent. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna walk out. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm gonna borrow from uh, from my August profanity because I used up most of my profanity back in February. But uh, <laughs> here's a good response. Go fuck all y'all. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, and and in. in this, to me, kind of gets to a point that I had been thinking about before we started the show as we were talking about and thinking about the mimics. For me, my brother used to run a, a community called Team Sarah. This was way back when Sarah Palin had become the nominee with John McCain back in 2008. And they were under attack from trolls. And these people were kind of really kind of devious. They were doing all kinds of mimicking to get inside and then they would do stuff to try to sabotage it. Like, you know, they pretend to be a Team Sarah member and then post a bunch of racist stuff and say, look what the Team Sarah people are doing. And and so people in Team Sarah started troll hunting, looking for trolls. And my brother said, don't, don't look for trolls. And this is my advice. I'm actually saying don't weed your garden. That's my stand. Don't weed your garden. Well, uh, I'll say it this way: Don't look, don't don't go try to figure out who the tares are, who you know the wheats and the tares. Who are the wheats, the the authentic uh, 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 plant that you want to harvest, and who are the tares, uh, the the weed that's sucking resources. Just look at individuals and judge them by their standards. How how consistent are they in actually living out liberty, in pursuing liberty for themselves right where they are, in taking direct action? And if they're not doing any of these things, I'm I, I don't I mean they could be totally authentic, die hard anarchists, but I'm not as interested in running with them because they're not doing. They're not actually taking direct action. They're not Really trying to make it not an impact on the world, an impact on their own lives. That's what I look for. So I don't necessarily have to try to figure out, well, who's really who's really with us, who's really against us. You go crazy. You could turn it that, that could turn into witch hunts. You can start and then you start defining libertarianism narrower and narrower and narrower and it gets pretty insane. I, I don't want to go down that path. That that goes back to what I talked about. Oh, gosh, somewhere before uh, we went on hiatus for that month, and uh, it, it was Carl Hess talking about the fear of of uh, infiltrators was more da- caused more damage than yes. the actual infiltrators did. Right. Now, I, I am a firm believer in weeding the garden. Uh, I agree with you not in not going crazy looking to looking for weeds to pluck but when you find one i hate to get all margaret sanger but sometimes that weed has to get plucked well that's true yeah and and you know generally i i i don't try to make really absolute statements so yeah sometimes like in the case of stefan molino if he was your guy and you're following him and you're listening to him you're watching his shows and the moment that he says hey Maybe Donald Trump is not such a bad idea. Hey, that's a weed that needs to be plucked. That's like pretty that's there's no gray area there. There's there's that's a pretty easy call. Okay, I'm done. You might still listen to his videos sometimes. I don't know. Actually, I still listen to his videos every once in a while. I'd say I see video I, I I'm still subscribed to him on YouTube, so I still see the notifications. I'd say about one in fifteen or so videos. I'm like sometimes I check it because oh well this sounds like an actual interesting topic because he 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 has a good research team and he 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 gets some interesting stuff out there sometimes, but very rarely. But sometimes I see a video and I just want to watch it because like oh that sounds like crazy stuff. I love yeah. me some crazy stuff. Let me go check out the crazy stuff. Yeah, I, he he does still have some good content. I I just the 
the dropping of the banner in 1984 with uh, him saying, oh, no, no, we've always been at war with whoever it was that they weren't at war with, uh, because that that's really what he did when uh, the Trump campaign came around, uh, right. when, he got on the, when he got on the Trump train. But I... I, I, I I, I really think it's important to to call these people out when the, when these mimics infiltrate the community. Uh, but me personally, uh, I, I've given up this notion that we are going to find freedom, and I, I, I've accepted the fact that uh, each individual is going to have to find their own freedom. They're going to have to yeah. make they're yeah. going to have to make their own anarchy. Maybe you could share it with your friends. Mm. Here's but the, if you're waiting, if you're waiting for everybody to vote, everybody else to vote for freedom and for freedom to win the win the ballot, it's never going to happen, ever. Yeah, and, and I would say the people that are calling you to pull their resources, I don't, I don't want to be like like I got some friends that are minarchists, and I I reject minarchism. Um, I I have no no patience for minarchism, but I like my minarchist friends. And, uh, yeah, I don't reject them. I'm just, right. and, and there are areas where I can run with them, but when it, when it comes to the critical anarchy, liberty type building stuff, I, I, I know they're probably not going to want to go as far as I'm going to want to go. The, they, they may be our friends, but they're not friends of Liberty ultimately, but yeah, I'm, 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 I'm I don't know where they're at in their growth. Like, you know, they could be, they could be on the way. I don't know. Unlike, I mean, I've always been pursuing liberty. I can tell you that. I've been pursuing liberty. It's been one of my bedrock foundations since I was a kid. And yet, during that journey of me pursuing liberty, my understanding of the pursuit of liberty had me being a Democrat at one point. Had me actually, I, I investigated communism for a period of time. And then I became a neocon. And I went through all these stages like I never was when, a minarchist though. I went right from neocon to anarchist. <laughs> when you when you investigated communism, how much weight did you lose? <laughs> it was only for a summer and uh I found and you know what you, what, you, you, what you get pretty thin over a summer. Yeah, well, I was already pretty thin, so it was the right it was the right ideology for me because I fit right in. But <laughs> what what interestingly what turned me off with uh communism was I reject? I don't really want to be part of an ideology that uh, that I it it seems to me kind of kind of uh, forces you to be an integral part of the community in which everybody's up in your business. That's why I rejected it. <laughs> Literally, when I was in my teens, that's why I rejected. It. I was like, no, no, I don't want them up in my business. I just want to be left alone. No, it's never too, mind that. Too, I mean, it sounds too nice. But out there. What's that? It's too people -y out there. Yeah, it's too people -y. <laughs> Yeah, I, I walk outside. It's like, holy crap, look at that. There's two people walking down the street. I go back inside. It's too people -y out there. <laughs> Don't make yeah. eye contact. Don't, Don't make, make eye, eye contact. contact. Don't make eye contact. Oh, shit, they saw oh, me. Oh, man. Are you? Hi, neighbor. Hi. Yeah. So, yeah, that's why I rejected it. But, uh, again, with uh, you know the mimics. Whether they're mimics or not, although, and I don't want to be absolute about this because sometimes you're right. Sometimes it's so obvious, yes, people deserve to be called out. Like I just called out the Glenn Tuttle guy because it's pretty, I mean, he went to a pretty stark place where it was pretty, uh, if you're calling on anyone to be taxed because they hurt your feels, yeah, okay, you're out of the club, so to speak. Not that I'm the arbiter of who's in the club or not, but yeah, there is a time to call people he's out, out of your club. He's out of my club. Yeah, that's it. That's the only club that I can say somebody's in or out of is my own. That's it. That's the only authority I have. You're out of my club. Uh, but the whether whether Jacob, Jacob, you have you have internet access. You're Facebook probably Facebook friends with Paul. Uh, you may be Facebook friends with me. Uh, I, six I months or less. I love you, Jacob. <laughs> it's it, it, I, I I I love you, brother. Don't worry about it. He uh, says he's in men's status, so he's I, not yeah, ready I know, to anarcho. I know he is. I know. I know. Uh, we'll help you out. I know. We'll help you out. Just keep watching. He watched my shows re regularly, so uh, he's on his – you're on your way, buddy. You're on your way. But the people that are, to me, and I don't want to say that they're wrong. I'm just going to say that I'm pretty sure they're wrong. 
But the people that are standing up and saying we got to vote harder, we got to, you know, the Libertarian Party, and nah, I ain't got time for that. I, I think that's a total waste of time. I think that's a total, you could argue that's tears right there. That is, it is, it is calling, and I'm, and I'm not, I am i do not want to be absolute about it. This is just how I feel. That's tears. Oh, is that on your list? Go ahead. Yes, yes. The parasite and, dist and distractors, uh, the political crusaders, and the conspiracy kooks top my list on that. And the political crusaders, are you familiar with Harry Brown's seven vital principles of government? No. Okay. I I'm going to pull it up here real quick. Uh, six of them are very, very good uh, because he's explaining how government works and— uh, number one is government is force. Uh, plain and simple, government will, will will break your legs and and then say, you know, here, here's some crutches. By the way, you owe us a million dollars for the crutches. So anyway, <laughs> uh, every government program, law, or regulation is a demand that someone do what he doesn't want to do, refrain from doing what he does want to do, or pay for something he doesn't want to pay for. And those demands are backed up by police with guns. And essentially, every, every, every law is enforced at the barrel of a gun. Number two, government is politics. This is important here. Uh, number three is probably even more important. But anyway, uh, whenever you turn over, whatever you yeah, whenever you turn over to government a financial, social, medical, military, or commercial matter, it's automatically transformed into a political issue to be to be decided by those with the most political influence, and that will never be you or me. Politicians don't weigh their votes on the basis of ideology or social good. They think in terms of political power. Number three, you don't control government. It's easy to think of the perfect law that will stop the bad guys while, while leaving the good guys unhindered. But no law will be written in the way that you have in mind. It won't be administered in the way that you have in mind. And it won't be adjudicated the way you have in mind. Your ideal law will be written by politicians for political purposes, administered by bureaucrats for political purposes and adjudicated by judges appointed for political purposes. So don't be surprised if the new law turns out to do exactly the opposite of what you thought you were supporting. Uh, every government program will be more expensive and more expansive, expensive and expansive than anything you had in mind when you proposed it. Uh, number five, power will always be misused. Number six, government doesn't work because government is forced, because government programs are designed to enrich the politically powerful, because you can't control government or make it do what's right, because every new government program soon wanders from its original purpose, and because politicians eventually misuse the power you give them, it is inevitable that no government program will deliver on the promises the politicians make for it. Uh, and then number seven is 100% pure bullshit because of numbers one through six. <laughs> Number seven, he says government must be subject to absolute limits because politicians have every incentive to expand government with it and with and with it their power. There must be absolute limits on government. But the, consti the, 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 the Constitution provides the obvious limits we must reimpose upon the federal government. Until the Constitution is enforced, we have no hope of containing the federal government. Apparently, it must have been like a year or two in between him writing number six and number seven, or maybe he got Alzheimer's and he wrote that government doesn't work because government is forced, because government programs are designed to enrich the power, politically powerful, because you can't control government and make it do what's right, because every new law, every, every government program soon wanders blah 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 but the constitution is somehow going to going to rein it in what are you going to do hold up the constitution and say by the power of magic parchment i command thee stop tyrannizing so yeah political crusaders and i i hate the constitution there i said it i hate the constitution absolutely do you know why i hate the constitution uh, why? The Constitution is a balm over the hideousness of acting out the political reality of government. It's it's never followed. It's an ideal that is never attained, or even oh, it, it it actually it actually is followed for the most part. Any violations are are mostly let, let, technical. Okay, you're right. Let let me rephrase that. The the ideals that people imagine the Constitution represents. That's what I'm talking about. 
Yeah, what they envision it to be. That's the bomb. As, as, yeah. As an example, Lincoln having the Maryland legislature arrested to prevent prevent them from voting on secession, uh, Lincoln having newspaper editors arrested for printing articles that were in opposition to the war of Northern aggression and, and the, the ramp up to it, um, wasn't entirely unconstitutional. Uh, what was unconstitutional was that was a congressional power and not a presidential power. Yeah, it was. <laughs> well, the constitution yeah. is, is, is followed in so far. I mean, it's, it's written with words. Yeah. With words. Okay, so automatically the constitution is it's it's a bomb. It's a it's it's a pacifier. It's a pacifier and and so people when the government does something I've I've had this rant m numerous times when 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 Obamacare passes the the conservatives they they recognize that now it's not a violation of the Constitution. I want to make that clear. Obamacare is not a violation of the Constitution. It's just a tax. And there's no limitation on how, why, what, when, or where Congress taxes you. Congress, in essence, owns everything because it can tax everything. So it de facto owns everything. But never mind. Your, your ideal, what you think the Constitution represents, it violated what you believe the Constitution represents. And so... Because you believe that this Constitution has power in the land, rather than doing what you should have done, which is o open and aggressive uh, ignorance, or, or, or not ignorance, but uh, ignoring of the law, total o open defiance. Instead of doing that, because you had my Constitution and you had a process, a legal process, you were, you were pacified. And so you spent all your time, effort, energy, and resources not into networking in an effective way to, to challenge this law by simply ignoring the law and having a network of friends to support each other if and when they were challenged. No, you didn't do that. You waited patiently and went through the legal process, imagining somehow that you were going to get something from that. Yeah. That's why I hate the Constitution. One one of my favorite things is when uh, somebody says, "Well, we have checks and balances. We have a legislative branch to, or we have a, a judicial branch to check the legislative and and executive branches." And I'm like, "Okay, wasn't the isn't the judicial branch nominated by the executive branch and uh, uh, approved by the legislative branch?" Well, yeah, okay. So yeah. one one branch of government is checking the other branch of government. Hey, how about if one breed of coyote uh, checks the, the other breeds of coyote just to keep them honest, you know, to keep them out of the hen house? <laughs> yeah. Jacob, you might want to read Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution. He's telling me Obamacare is a violation of the Constitution. Not really. Nope. No, no, interstate commerce, the power to tax. I mean, Roberts explained it. It's a power. It is the yeah. power to tax. Yeah, exactly. That's how, that, that's how Social Security got uh, got through the Supreme Court. It was listed as a tax. Yeah, and that's what it's still called. It's a Social Security tax. Yeah. So, so there's numerous precedents for this. So yeah, there's numerous, absolute numerous precedents for us. I mean, you think about the fact that uh, we live in most of us, not all of us, but most of us live in states in which it's mandatory for us to have car insurance. We accepted yes. that for how long? How long have we accepted that? And that that's actually not even called a tax. Mm -hmm. That's for, that, that that's just you have to have car insurance. It's mandatory to have car for, insurance. For some people, we've been accepting it our entire driving lives i took it for granted i i i mean growing up it, it is was always will be i didn't even think about it it just is just not, yeah. didn't even connect it to any kind of violation of liberty whatsoever not at all it's just a you know it's just common sense you know but how, where are we out on your notes because we're we're running late which is okay well okay. we are just let, well let, what, I, what i want to talk about with the political crusaders being a distraction the the effort and resources the the money the time the brilliance in 
in rare cases that are put into political campaigns. Uh, this this slot machine called the electoral process, or more like roulette, because people actually do win on the slots every now and again. Uh, <laughs> the 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 efforts that's wasted on there could be invested into many many other things and, and quite frankly i don't think the outreach that that people claim the education that people claim that the political process brings i don't really think is paying off in, in that great a dividends uh, i i don't think i don't think that gary johnson and 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 bill weld and and bob barr and wayne allen root created any new libertarians uh, i think they created some pro pot republicans is what it was they they brought uh, over some 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 maybe some blue dog democrats and some pro pot yeah. uh, so, li, li, so uh, social liberal conservatives yeah they they brought over some pragmatists because they, they, they did not become libertarians. And when, when the LP says, okay, we, we need to boost our numbers, we need to bring people in. Well, they're bringing people in, but they're not bringing libertarians in. They're bringing wash-ups from the Republican and Democratic parties. So when, when you look at the LP, and, and I've heard a lot of LP members talking about this, it's a cluster bleep of a mishmash of, of all sorts of, of uh, silliness in there. You have, you have, uh, you have people in the LP, and I know because I've run across them. I I'm not going to name names. I didn't take screenshots, but I've gotten into heated arguments with some of these folks. Uh, I'm not saying that this is what the LP stands for, but they are literally they're not they're arguing for public schools. Now they're not arguing for public schools like pragmatically. Some of them are saying, well, of course we're not for public schools, but for us to come out and say that we're against public schools, I get that argument. There's a lot of people that are having that argument. I'm not putting you folks in this category. But there are in the LP plenty of like way more than you should be if you're actually the LP, I think, but just my opinion that are actually arguing that public schools are good and that if you don't have public schools, then the children won't be educated and you hate children, literally in the LP. And and they're rising up in leadership even as we speak. Yeah. I To, to say that uh, – oh, gosh, I'm, I'm trying to remember what word you say. Uh, the, the principles of the LP – there's so many different factions with all these different groups that are in there. You can't say that the LP stands for anything. I mean, it, it, it's, it's worse than dealing with a bunch of regular libertarians, all the disagreement that's going on. <laughs> but you, but you, have, you have these crazy extremes out there that are – I mean, it's, it, it, it's, almost like, it's almost like the LP could be like a, like a phone book with the, with the various people that's in there. To me, the uh, and I, I I don't like I don't like taking positions that fundamentally invalidate uh, the way that the 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 path to liberty that people are choosing, uh, and and I don't know where your journey is going to take you. So take this uh, as you will. But to me, the LP has become nothing but the 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 AAA leagues for the Republican and Democratic Party. It's where people go because it's a smaller group. It's easy to rise in power, and it's a and not saying that all the leadership in the LP is this. I'm just saying there's a lot of people that are coming over. I believe for this reason, and they get to learn their politicking in the LP. And watch how many of them stay in the LP, and how many of them, when they feel like they've sown their oats and they've gotten a good feel for what to do, go back to the Democrat and Republican parties. Austin Peterson, just I, just I agree. I agree one hundred percent with that. Well, so I can't believe you uh, actually agree one hundred percent with me. That's fantastic. This is a moment for me. Except, except for the parts I disagree with. Okay, good. Uh, and, <laughs> I feel better. And and now I also want to talk about the conspiracy folks. And, oh yeah, and and this is gonna ruffle some feathers. I have less patience and tolerance for them. This is gonna ruffle some feathers. If nine eleven is an inside job, let, let, let's say that you find the documents. Let let's say that you get the incontrovertible truth. Then what? <laughs> if the if you if the Earth is flat, I, let, let, let's say that you 
you know, let, let's let's say that that guy that's going to build a, a spacecraft and go take pictures of the flat Earth. Let's say he succeeds, and let's say he gets out there and he shows. Rocket Man, you he mean? Gets, yeah. No, I thought that was Kim Jong Un. Well, no, that's that the other. Kim. Yeah, he's he's Rocket Man too, but no, this guy's also Rocket Man. Okay, okay. So let so let's say Rocket Man gets up there and he gets a picture of the flat Earth with the dome riding around on the turtle's back, and the 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 cat walking around trying to trip the turtle because that's what cats do well they got to yeah they don't know why they just have to yeah. but anyway let's say that this happens i let's let's say that we did find out the earth was flat what changes nothing i don't changes. think anything changes and and honestly no. even if you came up with irrefutable proof somebody even if you were totally right and you had irrefutable proof it wouldn't matter People can produce ghosts in your in your irrefutable proof, mm. and and the people that don't want to believe it will just not believe it, and the other <laughs> people who want to continue to live the lives that they're living will continue to live the lives that they're. Yeah, it's not going to fundamentally change anything. Or, or 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 let's say Rockefeller came out of the cooling cabinet, uh, unzipped the the human suit and, and revealed himself as a reptile and says, "Yeah." I did 9-11, and these are my co-conspirators, and proceed to give a a, a, a big old uh, confession. Uh, well, that might be taking a little bit far, but... Uh, no, what, what, CGI, what, what's, what's the, dude. Plausible yeah, deniability yeah. is still going to be there. Yeah, how many people are going to deny that it's real? How many people are going to say CGI? How many people are going to reject it outward because it goes against their belief system? Now, there, there are people out there that... Uh, they have a rigid belief system and any threat to it, they they completely reject uh, because it they die with their belief system. You know, maybe not literally, but definitely metaphorically. Yeah, I I've been through many deaths actually, uh, so, and uh, it's hard to let go, and it's hard <laughs> even when the facts tell you otherwise. So the question is, if, if, if you find out that if, if, if there's evidence that 9-11 is an inside job, okay, well, who's going to bring justice? The government? Now, what if, if the, the same government that was part of the inside job, they're going to bring they're going to bring justice, you know, kind of like the legis judicial branch is going to check the legislative and and um uh, uh, executive branch or the the different breeds of coyote or fox or wolf are gonna are gonna check each other. I wonder. So, I wonder if the people that exploit whatever facts and myths are out there today and twist them into a way that legitimizes their coercive enterprise model. I wonder if they'll find a way to do that if you find out the Earth is flat. Pro probably probably probably, Pro probably. so it's not going to yeah. change fundamentally it's not going to yeah. change and and to cling to these things and i i, I remember well i i think it was a couple of years ago when i was at pork fest i think they were still doing the the 9-11 discussion groups okay yeah it, it's somewhat interesting but once again what's it going to change it is it, it's not going to bring the system down now, nobody, nobody's going to get justice. The no one's going to jail. Be dead. Yeah. 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 No one's going to jail. Yeah. And if anybody that does go to jail is going to be a sacrificial lamb. Yeah. Some winky that turned on the lights before they launched the missiles or something, whatever. That guy yeah. or gal, whatever the case might be. Yeah. It's not going to change anything. That's why, I, you know, the conspiracy theorists, I'm like, this is a waste of time. And and I believe that conspiracy theorists are satisfying something else. Their their core driver is not my core driver, and I don't care that it's not. That's okay. That's I wish they would just come to terms with what their core drivers are, what their core preferences are. They're satisfying a preference in their pursuit of conspiracy theories, and that preference, I would argue, is not the pursuit of what we'll call freedom, like you and I. We're pursuing. We'll call it freedom. That that's not it. If you're if you're pursuing freedom, you would realize pretty quickly that devoting your lives. I'm not saying that like you know maybe it's a hobby for you. I know I know a couple folks that actually they're into conspiracy theories, but 
They don't live and breathe it. They they spend some time on it. It's fun for them. It's interesting for them. But it's not their main focus. It's like I love the Eagles. I love the Philadelphia Eagles. I watch football, and but it's not my life. Although I did cry when they won the Super Bowl, but that's another story. But and that was a conspiracy right there. That's a conspiracy. But I I I, I mean it. If this is your life, if this is what you're pursuing and you're and you're urging everybody else to do the same, yeah, that's when you're moving into that whole, uh, you know, Decepticon, uh, uh, whatever the heck, uh, what, what was the name of this? It's been so long I didn't remember the name of the title of the show. Trans- uh, the, Transformers. Yeah, Transformers or what? what are, yeah, the, 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 the mimics. That's when you become a mimic. That's when you're moving yeah. into mimic land. You're you're moving into that world where you are now beginning to suck the resources. Now now don't get me wrong, the people who chose to follow your path, they chose it. They're to blame. They, you didn't have on you know robot control over their lives, but still you're not really adding much. You're not really contributing. If for me the the the, the core cause is the the uh, the creation of freedom for as many people as possible. And pursuing the conspiracy theory stuff, that's not the path. That's not going to get us there. Us, whatever. The, the, the aggregate of individuals pursuing that goal. It's not going to get the aggregate of individuals there. I like saying that, by the way. I kind of got that phrase from Bodhi, by the way. Andrew Marich, our co-host on Tuesday's show. He talks about aggregates. I like that. Yeah. Nice. What else you got on your list? Uh... That, that pretty much nails we got it. it. You, want, you, want to, you want to take a shot at cyber beggars? Because they gobble up some resources, too. What's a they cyber you, beggar? They, they want you to go fund their white privilege. Oh, that's low, dude. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. The GoFundMeers. Of course, I'm uh, I'm fine with GoFundMes because I could one day use one. I might. I've never Ooh. used one yet, but man, the minute that I start standing up and saying, screw these GoFundMe or something, like, oh, I need to GoFundMe. And actually, you're referring to an incident that happened recently. Yeah. Yeah. It's an in, inside in, joke. In, in this particular case, the fools and their monies were not parted. Yeah. And actually, I'll be contributing to the GoFundMe that you're referring to. I haven't gotten to it yet, but I will. And uh, I was but actually, not, but, but I was at least one. one of the voices that was suggesting the creation of this GoFundMe in question before it happened. Yeah, because oh, there was made, a group of made, us that wanted to help someone and said, "Hey, create a GoFundMe so we can help you easier." Yeah. Oh, okay. Now, was that the original one or is that a new one? No, it's this one right now. The we're talking. Yeah, it's, it's the new one right, right now that. Uh, oh. I don't, I, don't <laughs> I don't know if I okay. want to mention names. I don't know if I want to mention names. Some of you listening, you know what, exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, and and you know what I'm talking about when when uh, when I make my snide remark because that was the one where the fools and their money were not parted. Oh, that was the uh, Mexico one, right? Yeah. <laughs> I know. If you don't know anything of what we're talking about, I'll just uh, I'll try to break this down. So somebody put up a GoFundMe. They basically, from my perspective, they they. They had a bunch of people telling them, hey, don't go to Mexico. Don't do it this way. It's going to be a lot of problems. It's going to be a disaster. It's going to cost you. It's going to be terrible. And so this person decided to ignore all the advice that everyone gave them. The, they ended up going down to Mexico. Everything bad happened that people said was going to happen. person did finally make it home, but it cost the person. So the person created a GoFundMe, and everybody laughed at this person. And then, and and I think justifiably so, uh, but you know, subjectively. And then uh, recently, another person, a friend of mine, created a gun phone GoFundMe. And then this person decided to uh, call this attempt to socially shame my friend and say that, oh well, you can attack me for my GoFundMe, but yeah, here you have your GoFundMe. And uh, I won't get into the details of what his GoFundMe is about, but uh, uh, basically referred to him as, as exercising his white privilege. Yeah. By the way, that person that we're referring to, you know who you are, girl. Yeah, that 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 would be a predator. I would call that one a predator. That one, you get up close to that one, and that one will destroy you. Stay the heck away from that. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm not saying names. I don't want to. I'm not saying names, but 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 folks who know who know the community, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you go to my Facebook page, you'll figure it out real quick. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. All mimics. right. Mimics. Not the what mimics. they appear to be. Yeah, not what they appear to be. In her case, you you you'll figure that out pretty quickly. Uh, what what's that line from uh from uh Fight Club? She's a predator posing as a house pet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So I think we got this covered. I think we nailed this. We got it done. I mean you want you wanna move on to the other topics now? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. We, we're you know, we were wondering where we gonna like take up the whole show. It's ten thirty, so we took up the whole show. We definitely it's only, it's only nine thirty here. No, it's well. God's time is ten thirty Eastern well, Standard Time. God's your time zone is the result of inflation from central timekeeping. <laughs> no, no, your yours is the result of deflation because you're a bunch of freaking commies out there, and that's what happens to you. Oh, Everything you, you, eventually you, you, gets devalued. No, deflation's not uh, devalued. Okay, whatever. Inflation's devalued. Yeah. Okay. Right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. It's inflation. Like, yeah, whatever. Don't confuse me with math, dude. That's not right. I yeah. did not. I did not drop out of high school in eleventh grade, just so you can hit me with math now. <laughs> it's inappropriate. So, oh, anyway, that's the end of our show. We've, we've, we've. I think we've uh, covered everything that we wanted to cover. Uh, highly recommend though that you listen to Ben Stone's podcast, and it is. I, I linked it also in the description for the video for the Liberty Principle Facebook page. And if you're watching on YouTube, I'm also going to include the link there. I highly recommend. And and when you're done with that, go ahead and listen to his other videos as well, or his other podcasts as well. I haven't quite listened to all of them yet, but I've listened to a number of them. And someday I hope to meet that guy and have a sit down with him. That'd be awesome. Didn't you meet him at the fest last year? No, I missed. I missed him. I didn't. Huh. Our, our, our paths never crossed. I, I, I missed him. So, uh, Thank you, Mr. Lou Sander. And now, I mean, this title of this show, uh, the 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 official name of our show now is uh, Leash Me Alone, and that's your title. Yes. Yeah, you came up with that. And you came up with a topic for the show. I don't even know why you have me anymore. I think next <laughs> week it's, hello, I'm Lou Sander. <laughs> that's all you need, baby. But we will be back next week. I don't know what we're going to talk about, but we will have something on the docket to talk about next week and uh no shows tomorrow tomorrow's friday so i i do not do shows on fridays fridays is my my uh planning and design days. sabbath no 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 it's it's my planning and design days. but i'll be back monday for headlines you may have missed at 12 30 p.m and on uh monday night we will be uh, uh, Professor Rambo and I will be doing Full Auto, is Daily's Full Auto, Monday night, also on the uh, Liberty Principle Facebook page. Uh, and I also, uh, a last plug, I want to get a last plug in here, Lou, for wirewatch.news. So wirewatch.news is a site that I've created that is, it's kind of like a drudge-like site. So the, the top part of wirewatch.news, you can see all the iState.tv uh, stories on the top, but in drudge format, and you'll click on them, it'll take you to iState.tv. But below that, most of the other links, there, and you'll see them broken down in all kinds of categories, they are to other sites. So these are all the stories, because I go through this process where I filter all these news links, and I can only I can only cover so many stories a day in different formats, whether it's from just a little news blurb to actually writing articles on them. I can only cover so much, uh, but but some of these stories are still they're kind of important. So I thought I'd create this. You can go there. It's a it's a drudge site, I would say, for the self-reliant type folks. That's, that's So I highly recommend you that. There will be new stories. There are already new stories I put up tonight, new links there tonight, and there will be new stories there tomorrow as well. So keep checking back on that. And that's it. You got anything else to say after I got my plug in? Yo, yeah, well, plug yourself, man. I'm Metaphorically. Th thank you, everybody, for for listening. You have and no plugs. In and no, dude, you gotta get you gotta get on it and get your show done and get it out there. I'm anxious to hear it. Soon. Soon. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you on. Uh, on uh, Leash Me Alone, we'll see you next Thursday. Same bat time, same bat channel. Good night, everybody. <laughs>